The following information should be used as a general guide for the inspection, filling, draining, and purging of the BMOS and MMOS LOX converter units. The BMOS Backpack Medical Oxygen System and the MMOS Mounted Medical Oxygen System provide an uninterrupted supply of therapeutic oxygen when filled with liquid oxygen. These units were designed with the user in mind, each catering to a specific oxygen needs. The BMOS and MMOS can be carried or worn by parachutists and ground support personnel. The MMOS extends those transport capabilities by being mounted in an aircraft, helicopter, or ground vehicle. Before beginning any of the following procedures, take time to become familiar with the risk associated with liquid oxygen. Never allow locks to contact skin. Always wear appropriate personal protective equipment, also known as PPE. Be sure to keep locks clear of ignition sources, contaminants, and remember to never transfer locks on asphalt. For more details on locks, precautions, handling hazards, and properties, refer to your specified document, operator's manual, technical order, or equivalent. To prepare for inspection, filling, draining, and purging of the BMOS and MMOS, it is a good idea to first gather all the required tools and equipment that will be needed for each procedure. Items needed include a liquid oxygen converter system purge kit, access to gaseous nitrogen source that conforms to type 1 grades A or B, purge drip pan, PPE, a vent cap, grounding cables, a clean dry lint free cloth, a stable clean lifted surface such as a counter or table, two oxygen clean crescent wrenches, and a fire extinguisher. For more details on required tools and equipment, refer to your specified document, operator's manual, technical order, or equivalent. It is recommended to complete a general inspection of the BMOS and MMOS LOX converter units at least once a month. When performing general inspections, be sure to check the following. Check the unit for any damage that could possibly affect the system performance, such as missing components, severe dents, missing fasteners, cracked or broken lens on the outlet pressure gauge, or any visible damage to the quantity indicator operating panel. Check for any moisture, dirt, debris, or hydrocarbons that could cause a potential hazard during filling. Check the outlet ports for general condition, freedom from contamination, be sure that the protective dust covers are installed and check for cleanliness of the surrounding area. Check the flow control valve for cleanliness and for smooth operation of the control knob through its entire setting range. If any condition exists from the preceding inspection steps that make the system unable to perform its intended function, return the system to the appropriate repair facility for corrective action. For more details on unit inspection or maintenance, refer to your specified document, operator's manual, technical order, or equivalent. Before beginning the filling procedure, please note that those persons not directly involved in oxygen servicing operations should stay outside of a 25-foot radius of the servicing area. For demonstration purposes, a 50-gallon LOX cart backpack medical oxygen system filling station, also referred to as the BMOS filling station, and an oxygen generator or liquefier, also known as an OGL, will be used for the following procedures. We begin the filling procedure with the BMOS, demonstrated here with a 50-gallon LOX cart. First, position the BMOS on a stable, clean surface with the servicing fill valve downwind such that the liquid oxygen exiting from the vent port will not come in contact with any personnel or any hazardous materials. If required, connect the unit's grounding receptacle to an approved earth ground connector. Verify that the flow rate selector is in the zero position. Position an aircraft type fire extinguisher upwind approximately 10 to 15 feet from the station. Ascertain that the vent openings of both the lock servicing tank and the unit to be filled are unobstructed. Open the BMOS vent valve toggle and allow the system pressure to vent down to zero PSIG. The BMOS vent valve should remain in the open position. Locate the unit fill port. Inspect the opening of the unit fill valve and the servicing hose fill valve for contamination or moisture. 
If needed, remove any contamination or moisture with a dry, clean, lint-free cloth. Pressurize the lock servicing tank to 35 plus or minus 5 PSIG in accordance with its instructions. Connect the filler valve on the servicing hose to the purge adapter on the side of the lock servicing cart. Purge the servicing hose until the liquid oxygen flows. This purging procedure should be accomplished before any unit is filled. During this process, maintain a pressure of 35 plus or minus 5 PSIG in the LOX cart servicing hose. Immediately after purging the servicing hose, connect the servicing hose fill adapter to the unit's fill valve to start the fill process. Under standard servicing conditions, each unit should reach maximum capacity within 10 minutes. When a continuous stream of locks flows from the vent port, close the vent valve, disconnect the servicing hose from the unit, close the servicing hose shutoff valve, and vent the locks cart servicing hose in accordance with the instructions. Caution: To prevent excessive pressure buildup in the servicing hose and possible injury to personnel, ensure that the lock servicing hose is fully depressurized. Open the servicing line drain valve if the lock servicing tank is so equipped. After filling, allow the temperature of the unit to stabilize for a minimum period of 10 minutes prior to transporting or loading in or on any vehicle or aircraft. Here we demonstrate the filling procedure with the BMOS filling station. For this procedure, we are using a dismounted medical oxygen system, or DMOS. First, position the filling station where it is intended to be used. Check the LOX quantity by actuating the LOX quantity button. The pressure indicated on the outlet pressure gauge should be at least greater than 25 PSIG during use. The pressure can indicate as high as 65 PSIG while in standby. Check the filling station outlet pressure gauge for the proper amount of pressure. Access the DMOS overboard vent and confirm that the overboard vent opening is unobstructed. Access the fill connection. Confirm that opening is unobstructed. Assure that both the male and female filling connectors are free from all dirt and moisture before coupling is attempted. Remove all dirt or moisture with a dry, clean, lint-free cloth. Verify that the unit's flow selector knob is in the zero position. Attach the male fill connector on the unit to the female fill connector located on top of the filling station. Hold the DMOS in the upright position with both hands and rotate until the pins in the female fill connector align with the slots in the male fill connector. Push down and turn clockwise to lock the unit into place. Ascertain that the vent opening on the right side of the DMOS is unobstructed. Expose the vent toggle valve on the DMOS. Open the valve by lifting up on the toggle handle. This starts the filling process. The unit is considered full when a steady stream of liquid flows from the vent port. When this happens, immediately close the toggle on the vent valve. Disconnect the unit from the filling station by holding the unit with both hands while turning in a counterclockwise direction and lifting up. Worth mentioning here is that the MMOS can also be filled with the BMOS filling station with filling station hose kit. To begin the filling procedure with an OGL, demonstrated here with an MOS, first position the MOS on a stable, clean surface with a servicing fill valve downwind such that the liquid oxygen exiting the overboard vent will not come in contact with personnel or any hazardous materials. If required, connect the MOS optional grounding receptacle to an approved earth ground connector. 
Verify the MOS control knobs are in the zero position and position a fire extinguisher upwind approximately 10 to 15 feet from the servicing station. Locate the MOS fill port. Inspect the opening of the MOS fill valve and the OGL servicing hose fill valve for contamination or moisture. Connect the OGL servicing hose female fill valve to the MOS fill valve to start the fill process. Rotate the OGL fill valve clockwise to fully engage the two valves and begin the flow of locks. Ascertain that the overboard vent opening on the MOS is unobstructed. Place the OGL in transfill mode in accordance with its operating instructions. Press the green button on the OGL and the MOS will begin filling automatically. Under standard servicing conditions, the MOS should reach maximum capacity within 10 minutes. When a continuous stream of locks flows from the overboard vent port of the MOS, disconnect the OGL filler valve from the MOS and place the OGL into make lock standby mode in accordance with its operating instructions. Record any servicing data as necessary. After filling, allow the MOS temperature to stabilize for a minimum period of 10 minutes prior to transporting or loading in or on any vehicle or aircraft. For more details on unit filling, refer to your specified document, operator's manual, technical order, or equivalent. Draining of the locks from the unit should be done upon occurrence of system malfunction, failure to pass inspection, when placing in storage or shipping, or when performing maintenance. Place the unit in an area free from dirt and hydrocarbons. Open the flow control valve to its highest setting, 15 liters per minute for the BMOS and 15 liters a minute times 2 for the MMOS. Drain time for the full 2 liter LOX capacity of the BMOS as well as the full 4 liter LOX capacity of the MMOS will be approximately 2 hours. To ensure complete draining of the units, allow the BMOS to drain until the pressure gauge reads 0 PSIG and the MMOS should be drained until the pressure gauge reads approximately 15 PSIG. At that point in time, you should close the flow control valve on each unit. For more details on the unit draining, refer to your specified document, operator's manual, technical order, or equivalent. Purging a unit should occur when, if at any time, it is believed that any of the units have become contaminated. For the purging procedure, you will need the items contained in the Liquid Oxygen Converter System Purge Kit. When purging the BMOS and MMOS, first ascertain that each unit has been drained and completely emptied of locks. With the unit and purge heater positioned on a clean work area, connect the approved nitrogen source equipped with a shutoff valve and regulator capable of controlling the source pressure from 0 to 100 PSIG to the inlet of the purge heater. Only gaseous nitrogen conforming to type 1 grades A or B should be used as a source for purging. Using the female filler adapter provided with the purge kit, connect the outlet of the purge heater to the unit fill port. Plug the power cable from the purge heater into an electrical outlet provided a source of 110 volts. Make sure that the unit vent ports are open. Open the gaseous nitrogen source shutoff valve and adjust the source inlet pressure to approximately 55 PSIG. Turn the purge heater circuit breaker switches to the on position. Purging gas should begin to exhaust from the unit's overboard vent port. Place your hand within the exhaust stream coming from the vent port to determine whether the exhaust temperature is slightly above that of the surrounding air temperature. Continue to hot purge for a minimum of 45 minutes until the exhaust temperature is above ambient temperature. After completion of hot purging, turn the heater off and cold purge for a minimum of 15 minutes 
are until components have returned to ambient temperature. Disconnect the purge heater filler adapter from the unit's fill port, trapping approximately 25 PSIG inside the system. Turn the purging source off, then disconnect and properly store all purge kit components. Replace the fill port dust caps on the units. For more details on unit purging, refer to your specified document, operator's manual, technical order, or equivalent.